All right, hello, Honors 410, and welcome to what's not only our last video lecture for the week, um, but actually anticipate being our last video lecture for a little while um, until midway through week five, our final week of the class. So uh, for our next several classes, we're gonna be focusing on that workshop process. So um, assuming all has gone as planned, I'll be sharing with you our first three workshop submissions for this time. So as a reminder, your homework for over the weekend is to uh, read those first I, I've said three to be, to be transparent. I'm recording this in advance. We may have been scheduled for fewer than three, but however many uh, workshop submissions we have for our first round, uh, those are the ones that, that I, I will hopefully have shared here. Um, and so your homework is to read those uh, and prepare for a discussion of those uh, in our next class uh, on Monday. For Monday's class, there'll be the second round of workshop submissions due, you, and your homework will be to read those for the discussion on Tuesday and, and so on and so forth. So that will be um, the workflow process. Um, until everyone has gone through this workshop. Um, with that, again, a reminder, the expectation is you read every single one of the workshop drafts and that you comment on every single one of them. Again, this is still part of the, the regular uh, class engagement and participation, but remember there is also a separate line item uh, in terms of grading for workshop participation. So the expectations are higher. So you, you can, um, for example, this is splitting hairs a little bit, but I think you all can, can certainly follow this. Um, but so you could participate in just one of the discussions and still earn your participation and engagement credit for that class. Um, but if you only participate in one of the discussions uh, of a workshop piece, that means that you're not kind of meeting the obligations of commenting on all of them, in which case your workshop participation score would not be so great. So um, again, just to be sure we're, we're crystal clear on that, expectation is that um, for the classes to follow, Every single uh, workshop draft we look at, you're reading it, you're providing some thoughts on it in the conversation and the, the discussion thread for, for each one of them. Um, and again, this discussion does not need to be restrained to only positive feedback. The way I encouraged us to do um, for the uh, communal writing project, that was more understanding that these were kind of you know rough drafts and things people were doing you know, relatively quickly. Um, sort of practice for this part of the class. At this stage of the class, you've had a little bit more of an opportunity to prepare for this assignment. Um, you've done the shorter work before. Um, and more to the point, um, grading wise, everyone's gonna be fine, right? If you just turn this in on time and at resembling expectation, you will probably re receive an A-level score. Uh, but it's the uh, it's the revised draft that we're getting towards later on that's gonna account for more. And so this is the first step towards that. Um, if you just tell people their, their work is perfect, you're not really helping them out, right? Because uh, in, in the next round of this, they are going to have to make some changes. They will have my feedback, um, but, but it is useful to have um, some critique from other folks as well, um, especially because uh, you, you're all great readers. Some of you might notice things that I don't or have an interpretation that I didn't pick up on um, that might be really valuable to the author. Uh, all that said, also, please be sure to, to remember to be kind to each other as well. So if you see a piece really getting beat up, um, it's been my experience. I, I've done this with with, I don't know, probably several hundred students at this point in different venues. Um, no workshop piece I've read has ever been perfect. There's always been stuff we could critique, um, but none has ever been without re some redeeming value as well. There have been um, pieces that show potential, some good ideas at least, some good specific details, uh, specific scenes included. So um, you know, be, be kind as well. Be sure to point out what is working so far, what the author should be sure to maintain uh, in addition to those critiques. Um, okay, so all that said, um, we also do have our final submissions for the uh, communal writing project that are posted here today. Um, so we will have discussed those in the discussion below as well. Um, and I'll also um, leave a little bit of space for us to just kind of debrief this communal writing project experience in general. Um, so um, but, you know, please do feel welcome to participate in each parts of that discussion as well. Uh, but okay, um, and so, uh, and I Sorry, sorry, I'm kind of looping around here a little bit, but I should also just say for the uh, workshop process, if you still feel a little fuzzy on any of this, have questions, you're probably not the only one. Um, please do feel free to share questions about that uh, below in the discussion as well. 
But okay, so for the rest of today's video though, I am going to turn back to the McBee book um, and the title story, How Rabbit Went Down. Um, and for this one, uh, I have a, a couple just kind of broader questions I'm going to introduce. I'm going to get a little less granular with this story, um, in part because uh, for, for me, this is a story where um, a lot of it's about the big picture and kind of what this story accomplishes, um, or at least what interests me most. Uh, as always, I invite all of you to bring in some other stuff that I haven't introduced into the discussion below. Um, but okay, just uh, first I want to touch on setting for this story. Um, it's set uh, in New Orleans and this trip to New Orleans. Um, and I think it, there's, there's a lot of preconceptions people tend to have around New Orleans um, about what this city represents, what it, what it is or is not. Um, and so I, I want to leave that a little bit open-ended because I have my preconceptions that I had before I ever visited New Orleans. Uh, I have been to New Orleans once and that um, reaffirmed some of what, what I thought and, and shifted some of those perspectives a little bit as I think any firsthand experience in a place can. Um, but even I'm curious of your conceptions of New Orleans coming into this story uh, and or after you've read this story, kind of how you conceive of this place. Um, I also wanted to ask, so one of the big structural choices of this story that's a little bit unusual is we have those interspersed italics that tell sort of the fable of this, this rabbit character um, interacting with the, the grandmothers, as they're called at one point. Um, and so I'm curious as to the effect of interspersing um, this, this story, this fable, this myth, um, within the context of the, the rest of the story, of kind of the present action, of, of kind of a contemporary story as it's playing out. Um, why do we think McBee chose to interweave this story? How does it affect us as readers? How does it affect our understanding of kind of the, the front story here? Um, wh what do we think of this? Um, and then there's actually one other kind of specific point I wanted to bring in. Um, and I want to introduce this point um, largely just because I think that it speaks to um, some things we can think about when we're doing our own uh, workshop drafts coming up. Um, so in terms of a craft piece of this, it's a very simple, very practical choice, but one that I think is worth paying attention to. So I'm going to draw attention to page 64 into page 65, um, sort of the, the end of that big paragraph on, on 64 four there. Um, so it reads, uh, Lucy laughed and pointed out to him that their names were similar, Lucy and Lucian. Uh, and then uh, on the next page, um, we, we have him introduce her friend, uh, his friend either as Jean or John. Uh, that's spelled J-E-A-N for Jean, like, like the French Jean, uh, not, not Jean, but Jean or John. Um, sort of introduces um, a, a little bit of the disorientation of being in this place and not really knowing exactly you know, wh which language they're referencing, uh, knowing uh, wh which formation of the name is being used. Um, but for both of these choices, um, the similarity between Lucy and Lucian and the fact that attention is drawn to it um, immediately makes that name Lucian stick in our mind a little bit more, right? Um, which is a choice. Uh, sometimes that could be a dangerous choice because it could confuse us if names are too similar on the page. Um, but sometimes in, in making it sort of similar, we're drawing a connection between these characters and actually creating a little bit more kind of stickiness to that character's name. Um, in a story with a bunch of characters, there is always a risk of just confusing the reader, right? I'm sure mo most of us probably have had that experience at some point or another. Um, we're reading a story and um, we get to the fifth or sixth new character who's been introduced and we start to get a little bit confused about which character is which, right? Um, unless it's been really clearly delineated for us in, in one way or another. Um, similarly, Jean or John, um, from that point forward, um, that character is typically referred to as Jean or John, right? Um, and in that choice, that sticks out as well, right? So if it were just John, especially J-O-H-N, uh, we, we might lose track of uh, who this character was and have to flip back a page and remind ourselves who that person was. Um, and it constantly being Jean or John, uh, that's a unique way of portraying a name, right? So again, it helps it stand out for us. So uh, I encourage y'all to think about that again, especially if you have stories where you're going to be introducing quite a few characters in a relatively short space. Um, as much as you all are, are really good readers, uh, it often can come up that we start to lose the thread a little bit. And especially in the draft stage where the, a story uh, very well might be struggling with clarity a little bit. I know that's something I personally struggle with a lot in my first drafts is it all makes sense in my head. But when you put 
put it on the page and give it to someone who's not in my head, uh, all of a sudden all these confusions come up about where we are and seeing what, what was really going on, what I intended to say. Um, I think it's a relatively common thing. So anything we can do to help the reader out, to help make characters a little bit more memorable, a little bit more distinctive from each other, even on something as simple as just a naming level, uh, can be a really constructive step. Um, but okay, so I'm going to leave the, the discussion there. So um, yeah, I welcome you to comment on how Rabbit went down in the discussion below. Uh, obviously comment on our communal writing project pieces from today, on the overall communal writing project process. Uh, and again, if you have any questions about the workshop process, this is a really good time to ask them as well as we prepare for this next phase of class where we're going to spend all of next week, all of week four is dedicated to workshop um, and the beginnings of week five as well. Um, so unless something strange happens or I feel need to jump in to clarify something, you won't be seeing video lectures from me during that stretch of the class. Uh, I'll be back for the tail end of week five to, to wrap things up uh, with more traditional classes with, the, with this structure. All right, thank you all very much. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you down the road.